Good afternoon, thank you all for coming. Just before 2.30am today, Saturday the 20th of March, patrols and paramedics were called to Anguston Road at New Ryukta after a Ford utility, which had been travelling east on Anguston Road, left the road and crashed into a tree on the southern side of the road. As a result of the collision, a 25-year-old uh, man from the Brussels region, who was the driver of the vehicle, and, a tw and his 20-year-old passenger, also uh, from the Brussels region, uh, died at the scene. A third passenger, a 20-year-old man, also from the Brussels region, was riding unrestrained in the rear of the utility. He was subsequently airlifted to the Royal Adelaide Hospital uh, via helicopter with serious injuries. Anguston Road was closed between Light Pass Road and Research Road with diversions in place. While the investigation into these two deaths was carried out, the road has since been reopened to all traffic. There have now been 28 lives lost this year compared to 25 lives lost on our road for last year. This is the state's worst start for road deaths in more than a decade. Police are continually frustrated that the message in relation to safety on our roads is not getting through. The safety of drivers and the ability to reduce the road toll is not solely a police problem. It's a community issue and a community problem. The whole community and every driver must take responsibility and ultimately that is the only way to reduce the road toll and, and to reduce the continuing loss of lives on our road. Shane, what's your reaction to the fact that this guy was travelling in the back of the year? As I said, we're extraordinarily frustrated. One of the fatal fives is dangerous road use. Dangerous road use is about poor choices. Um, I don't think it's a secret to anybody that riding unrestrained in the back of a utility is dangerous. Riding unrestrained in the back of a utility um, in these circumstances um, is just ridiculous. South Australian police cannot police that sort of poor decision making. That is wholly and solely down to the individuals. Uh, are you investigating any other fatal fives in relation to this crash? The uh, major crash investigation attended the scene and they've taken control of the investigation. At this stage, it's clearly early, uh, but in relation to the fatal five, um, dangerous road use, excessive speed, use of drugs and alcohol and seatbelts are all under consideration. They are four of the fatal five. This particular collision, collision and these lives lost are a poster child for why we keep sending this message in relation to those issues. Why is it you think the message is not seeming to get through? We're incredibly frustrated that drivers continually seem to believe that this doesn't apply to them or this can't happen to them. This is just another circumstance where we have local people in a local environment, young men who are well aware of that environment, well aware of that road, have travelled on it many times, and they have made very, very poor decisions, and this has been the result. What is your message to these young boys, family, friends? My message is in the entire community, in that everybody has to take responsibility. If you are a parent, if you are a partner, uh, if you're a child and you know somebody who drives a car, the message should be, please comply with the road rules. Drive to the conditions. Do not drink and drive. Wear your seatbelt. Do not be distracted while you're driving your car. Every parent should sit down with their child and have that conversation. Every child should have that conversation with their parent. I implore anybody if you even suspect the person that's driving your car that you're about to get into has been taking alcohol and drugs, do not get into that vehicle. It's as simple as that. We implore the entire community to start making good choices in relation to driver behaviour. And if they fail to do so, we will continue to see these bad outcomes. Is there any suggestion that it come from a gathering or a party or anything? As I said, very early in relation to the investigation, so I don't have those details as to where they'd come from at this point in time. As an integral member of a community like the Barossa Valley, what does this do to a community when you have two young lives lost? There's also the serious injuries with this as well, but three families have now had their lives irreversibly damaged by what's happened. 
But it goes far beyond those families. These are small rural communities. These deaths, these lives lost for these young men impact the families, the friends, the sporting clubs, um, the emergency service workers uh, who attend these scenes. They're almost inevitably all known to each other or they're known to someone who knows these people. The ripples of the effects of these lives lost ripple through the community on every single occasion. And these communities mourn the loss again and again and again. And despite that, the message doesn't seem to get through. Are you sick of having to get up here and say this message? I, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think any police officer wants to stand in front of the media and have to talk about lives lost on our road. But more to the fact, more to that fact, no police officer wants to have to knock on the door of that family to give them that message. The, these decisions that people are making, it sounds like even if uh, laws were tougher, penalties were higher, that sort of thing, it wouldn't, would, would that have any impact or is this simply back to just guys making crazy choices? I don't, look, I don't think you can uh, select one section of our community and say this is a particular section of the community that has a problem in this life. This is a whole of community issue. This isn't just about young men or women or older, younger people. This is about the entire community and the attitude towards their behaviour on the road. So what do you think needs to change here if the message isn't getting through? We've had the worst start in a decade. Uh, to be honest, I'm extremely frustrated. Uh, I don't personally have an answer to that. Um, we will continue to try and we'll continue to drive home the message. Um, and I think it's very, very important that we do so. Um, will you be increasing any patrols or traffic safety? Will be doing uh, what obviously, we're coming into Easter this weekend. Easter is traditionally a very, very dangerous time on our roads. We have really heavy road use, particularly in those regional areas, as people leave the city for one weekend. We know historically that has caused problems. Um, I would implore every single person who is planning on going away for the Easter long weekend to um, comply with the road rules. You know, take time, make sure you're rested. Don't drive if you've been drinking or taking drugs. Give yourselves plenty of time, take rest breaks. You know, make sure that you're not fatigued in this environment. Um, be patient and drive to the road conditions. The roads will be heavy. There will be lots of people on those roads. There will be lots of the usual vehicles, caravans and boats and these sorts of things, which travel at varying speeds. People must be patient in these environments. And that is driving to the road conditions. And I implore everybody to think about that, give themselves time, make sure that they avoid these fatal five, and everybody should arrive to and from those Easter, the Easter break safe. And we all want that. Nobody wants to be doing this again next weekend. Did you personally know any of the families involved? Uh, I didn't know any of the families involved personally, no. Okay.